Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and in today's video I am back with challenge number two in my Shop Your Stash September challenge series. I hope you'll stick around, see what the challenge is, see what I'm going to create and find out how you can play along. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. I'm super excited to be back with my second challenge in the Shop Your Stash September challenge series. If you haven't already heard about this, I do have the introduction video linked in that description box below, but basically I am challenging myself and hopefully you to use what we have in our stash this month and create. I know that we probably all have items or tools or things that we just had to have and maybe haven't even inked up or gotten out of the package yet. So I'll be here to share challenges with you throughout the month and I do have a playlist as well of all the challenges so far and that is also in the description box. I will give more details during the process of how you can play along but for now let me tell you about challenge number two. This challenge is called to die for. I want you to use a die that you have never used before. Now, if you don't have cutting dies, you could always use a digital shape for your cutter that you haven't used yet. Or if you have a paper punch that you haven't used yet, use that. I want you to make this fit for stuff in your own stash. For my unused die, I will be using this set, I believe, yep, it was from My Favorite Things, and it is really old. You're going to notice in this series that a lot of the products I used aren't going to be available anymore. But that's what I want to do. I want to just show you and myself that we don't always have to have the latest and greatest to start creating. So I will be using this die set along with some circus theme pattern papers and some scraps of cardstock to create a baby card today. Let's go ahead and get crafty. Before I get started with the process, I do have a special channel member shout out. I recently had a longtime subscriber and frequent commenter join me at the Paper Trimmer Level member. Thank you so much, Noreen, for your support. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below. For today's cards, I'm going to be using the design and the single card dimensions from the September 2021 sheet load of cards. I will be using a single 6x6 double-sided pattern paper, and you can download this printable at the video linked in the description box below. Now, I won't go over a whole bunch of the sizes for this card. I do already have a process video and one where I showed you how to use a single double-sided sheet to make a card. So check out the description box below, but I did want you to go ahead and see that. One thing that will change a little bit about my card is the width of the sentiment piece. Instead of cutting it to two inches wide, because I'm going to use one of the elephant dies, I will be cutting it to two and a half inches wide by the same two and a half inches tall. This way I will be able to fit the sentiment and my little elephant. Now the same thing will go for the backer piece, except instead of being two and a half inches tall, it will be two and five eighths, and that is the same as on the original instructions. Once both of those pieces were cut, I stacked them up together and cut the angle in the bottom so that I would be assured that it was the same for both pieces so there was a nice border. Then I brought in another coordinating pattern paper and I cut a strip that was wide enough to accommodate my little elephant. And then I also went and brought in a scrap of navy blue cardstock and cut this for the mat behind the center strip on the card. While I die cut out the baby elephant and the heart from this single piece of pattern paper, I thought I would stop by with some quick instructions on how to join me for the challenge. 
I would love you to join me this month in these challenges and create with what you have. And you can do this in three simple steps, which I will explain now. The first thing that you'll do is create a new project following today's challenge using only items from your stash. Then you're going to upload a photo of that project using the form linked in the description box below. And finally, you can sit back and enjoy the recap video in October. I do ask that you create a separate project for each challenge and please even if you're super inspired by a single challenge and create more than one project, please just choose your favorite to upload. When you photograph your project, rectangle landscape photos are the best and make sure to send them at a nice quality. And just a heads up that even though my watermark will not be on your photo, I will not have time to add your name or YouTube username. So if you would like to do that, please do that ahead of time. And here in just a second, I'll show you a quick way that you can do that. Once your project photo is ready for uploading, you will need to use the specific form for the challenge. Each challenge will have a new form linked, so make sure when you're uploading that the challenge number or name at the top of the form matches the challenge that you're submitting for. If you do want to add your name to your photo, it doesn't have to be anything fancy or require any special software. Most mobile devices and laptops or computers will allow you to open a photo and add a text box to it. Then you would just save this and upload it to the form. Speaking of the form, an example is up on screen now and you will want to make sure that you fill out each individual section. You will enter your YouTube username, your first name, your email address, and the email address is only if I would need to contact you with a question and I will not be retaining these after this month's challenge. You will then let me know how you followed the challenge. In this example, it would be what kit you used. Then I need you to agree to let me use the photo in the October video. And finally, you're going to upload the photo from your computer and submit it. You will want to make sure that you see this screen that says you have submitted it before closing out your window. All photos will be due by midnight central time on October 10th. I am looking forward to seeing what you create this month and hope that you'll join me. And now back to the process. You'll see here that I have a little red heart and then off to the right is my baby elephant. Now it's time to get that sentiment piece stamped. I will be using congratulations on your bundle of joy from this whimsy doodle stamp set. And because it is red rubber, I will remove the mouse pad from my Misty. Now, because I have kind of a unique angle on this and I cannot see through that red rubber, I will be utilizing just a scrap of clear cardstock to help me line it up correctly on my final piece. Now for now, it's not going to matter where I have it on that clear cardstock, but I will make sure over on the door that it is straight left to right. Then it was, so I just went ahead and inked it up, and then I'm going to stamp it once onto that clear cardstock. Now this doesn't have to be a great image, this is to just get an idea of where it's going to go. Then I place my piece of cardstock below the clear cardstock and kind of just wiggle it and make sure that it's aligned where it is going to stamp nicely using the current setup. Once that's ready, I hold the piece down with my magnet, ink up that sediment stamp again, and I'm all ready to go. Then that clear piece of cardstock can just be cleaned off with my stamp cleaner. Now that all of the individual pieces are ready, it's time to put together the card. While I do that, I thought it would be a great time to stop by with the QOTV or question of the video. Today's question once again comes from channel member Crafty Days, aka my sister Lisa, and she would like to know, is there a crafty item you are saving up for? If yes, what is that? 
you can let us know in the comment section below and don't forget to include the hashtag, hashtag QOTV, so that we know you've answered it and would like us to see it. I myself am not currently saving up for a specific item, but the reason that I am doing Shop Your Stash September is because I want to have some money left over for next month's Stamp Joy event in Des Moines, which I am attending with my sister. I know that I'm probably going to be very tempted with all the Tailored Expressions goodies, and I want to have a little fun money to be able to spend. In the past, I have saved up for things like my Misty, and also I have a button maker that was pretty pricey and it took me a while to get. After the pattern paper pieces were on the card, I used some of my favorite foam tape and I popped up the elephant and the little red heart on the sentiment piece. Now to add a little sparkle, because I didn't think gems necessarily went on this card, I brought in my Spectrum Noir sparkle pen and added a little bit to the heart. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put together today's card and I also hope that you'll be joining me for this challenge. If you did enjoy the video, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Until my next one, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.